Hey guys, what is up? Hope everyone is doing well. So welcome back to another video. Um, if you're new, my name is Ebony and I'm a naturopathic nutritionist. I have definitely had my fair share of menstrual migraines and headaches. I've had ones which last a day, but I've also had the ones where, you know, you go to sleep with a headache and you think, you know, you're going to sleep it off and wake up and it's going to be okay, but you don't. You wake up and you still have that banging headache. Like, I know how that feels. So in today's video, I thought I'd share all my tips on how to relieve and reduce these menstrual headaches and also just how to prevent them in the first place. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Before I do jump in, I just want to quickly pop in a reminder because we're coming towards the very end of the month and my January offer for the month with my consultations is nearly up. So I'm offering my one-to-one -one consultation which include an initial consultation, a feedback session, a follow-up consultation, a full nutrition, diet and lifestyle um, and skincare plan, discount on supplements, um, have I listed everything? I think that's pretty much everything. You can see all the details on my website. I'm offering all of that for £150 um, and come the 1st of February that will be going back to its original price of £180. So if you are interested in working with me now is a great time to book. Um, you can book your session for February if you want to, it's just you have to make you know the booking in January to redeem this offer. So I will leave all of the information in the top of the description bar if you are interested and I do also offer free 20 minute discovery calls if you just want to have a chat with me and just see if there is something that you um, want to do and move forward with. Let's get into today's video. So firstly let's just understand why we get these menstrual headaches. It's all about really two things. It's about estrogen and it's about serotonin. When we are coming up to our period our estrogen dips and when our estrogen dips our serotonin also decreases. Now if your estrogen goes so low that your serotonin drops so low that is the perfect storm basically to create a menstrual migraine and these two together can actually increase something in the body which is known as substance P which basically in short term I always think of the P as pain um, because substance P increases pain in the body. So all of this together is basically the perfect storm for a menstrual migraine. So the first thing that I would recommend is if you are getting menstrual migraines on a very regular basis and you are on the pill, then the first thing to check is actually your pill. Go speak to your doctor, tell them, them that you are getting these very regularly because it actually could be the levels of estrogen in your pill which is actually um, being part of the problem basically of why you're getting these menstrual migraines. So that is definitely the first thing. Number two though, we can definitely look at our levels of estrogen and serotonin. So let's start off with estrogen. Something that we can actually utilize in our diet is phytoestrogen. So I don't know if you've ever heard of these before, but basically they're very, very clever. They mimic estrogen in the body, but basically they work both ways. They work if you need to reduce your estrogen, but they also work if you need to increase your estrogen because basically phytoestrogens they compete for the same pathway as estrogen in the body so if you have low levels they like I said mimic estrogen so they can help increase those estrogen levels but if you have high levels of estrogen they compete for the same pathway and they can actually help to lower um, the estrogen in the body it's pretty mental how they can do um, both um, but it's very fascinating and very cool so sources of phytoestrogens are things like tofu tempeh so if with those kind of things make sure you go for a good quality like an organic piece of tofu and tempeh don't go for like processed soy that's not going to give you the same results we've also got things like legumes like lentils are fantastic oats also great and also seeds like sesame seeds are really good as well i'll pop on the screen now some examples of phytoestrogens so yeah definitely look at ways of incorporating them into your diet and that can really help with your estrogen balance also another interesting thing to add in here is that seeds particularly like the sesame seeds and flax seeds these are fantastic for estrogen and if you think about it it makes sense because these are also used in seed cycling so um, yeah you can use that to help with your menstrual cycle so that is why because they're really fantastic to help balance out the hormones in our body okay so now let's talk about serotonin and when I'm thinking about serotonin I kind of think about it in kind of three steps you have something called tryptophan which we can find in food um, and tryptophan basically converts um, into 5-HTP in the body and then 5-HTP will actually turn into serotonin. So this is kind of the pathway that's happening inside the body. Now we can actually do things which help 
all three parts of this. Okay, so let's start with tryptophan. Tryptophan is something which is easily found in food and you can definitely increase these foods in your diet to help with your serotonin levels. So these foods include things like turkey, nuts, bananas, tuna. I'll pop on the screen right now some examples. Um, but yeah, eating these foods will really help with your serotonin levels. And also an interesting fact, serotonin actually converts into melatonin, which makes us sleepy. And this is why on Christmas day as well, when we eat so much turkey um, it's very common for people to feel very tired after their Christmas meal because we've actually had a very serotonin rich dinner so yeah I thought that was quite an interesting little fact um, the next thing that we can look at is 5-HTP so really with 5-HTP it's very common for people to supplement with this it has been seen that people who really do suffer with menstrual migraines um, really benefit from 5-HTP supplementation and this basically is kind of a shortcut to serotonin some people find it more effective because um, you know you don't have to do that, do that conversion from tryptophan to 5-HTP you know it's already there and it just goes straight to serotonin so some people find that's much more effective the only thing I will mention about 5-HTP though is if you're on any medications make sure you do discuss with your GP first before supplementing especially if you are on antidepressants because there can be a little bit of a contradiction between those okay and then we can look at serotonin and a way to boost our serotonin is actually from exercise which I know is not what you think about doing when you have a migraine or a headache but just some gentle exercise can actually um, increase the serotonin levels in the body and that could be um, very beneficial as well. Also I'm going to throw in another interesting fact if you have ever had a migraine and then you've thrown up and that's made you feel better that is actually because when you throw up that contraction in your um, stomach actually creates um, serotonin and um, increases that serotonin in the body and that is why the headache is relieved after throwing up. I mean, I'm not recommending throwing up to get rid of your migraines at all, but I just thought it was an interesting fact that serotonin production is very predominantly in the gut as well. Um, so yeah, just thought it was an interesting fact you might want to know. Okay, the next tip I have is working on inflammation. So when you have a headache, obviously there is that heightened level of substance P that I mentioned earlier, you know, increasing pain and also around there is a lot of inflammation. So anti-inflammatory foods can really help with um, reducing headaches. So, you know, putting a bit of tumor in the diet, ginger, um, extra virgin olive oil, have these things which are on an, in an everyday basis, you know, all round, not just around when you have a headache, and that will just help reduce um, the inflammation in the body. Next thing, sticking with that substance P, so something that also increases substance P is sugar. So when you have a migraine, do not reach for the sugary snacks because that will just increase the pain that you are feeling. So yeah, be mindful of that. Try and go for more lower sugar options um, and that should also help just reduce some of that pain that you are experiencing. The next thing that you can use is magnesium. So magnesium is fantastic for any kind of pain that we experience in the body, but it definitely works for migraines and headaches as well. It's particularly with migraines that are around and like linked to PMS. So you can either take supplements or you could have a magnesium salt bath. Um, you can, I mean, for, for the body people use sprays, but I would probably would say either supplementation or a salt bath is the most effective for migraines. Um, and I do tend to take those anyway around my periods because magnesium was, will also help with cramping in the body as well. So um, the two, it can kind of work on two areas at once so yeah definitely look at magnesium you can also increase your magnesium rich foods and um, so dark green leafy vegetables again I'll pop on the screen now some examples um, but really if you need that more instant relief supplementation um, is probably going to be a little bit more effective okay and then we have massage points these are so effective and I really recommend playing around with them so one that I like to use is you squeeze between um, your thumb and your index finger here in the middle so there's a pressure point and if you hold um, that down for a couple of seconds that can help to relieve um, headaches and pain in the body you've also got I love this one here between the brows so kind of where your bridge of your nose kind of stops and meets your eyebrow if you push your two fingers up there when you have a headache you will feel that sweet spot it really helps to relieve some of that tension Another one is the two point I'll get a picture actually I'll pop it on the screen now the two points at the back of the neck pushing up 
into those can really help especially if you have more of a tension headache or it's kind of linked um to your eyesight like your eyes are hurting as well that one can really um be beneficial and another one is sometimes headaches can also link to tension in our upper back so pushing on these two points on the screen on the upper back um can also really help to relieve um headaches as well so definitely play around with pressure points um because they can be extremely effective at giving you some kind of instant relief the thing is with my menstrual migraines and menstrual headaches they're you know they kind of tie in with PC pms i've not said pcos i've just been talking to a client about pcos oh my god they tie in with pms and the thing is is that when you suffer with PMS, you know, that is a sign of hormonal imbalance, actually. Um, and actually, you know, we shouldn't actually experience high levels of PMS. Um, and if you do, it's not something to sit back and just accept, like definitely look into your hormonal balance, because we really shouldn't be having bad headaches, horrific cramps, and all the, you know, all the symptoms that come along with it. So um, this is actually kind of my last tip, actually, with headaches, in terms of reducing and preventing them for the long run, I would really recommend looking into your general hormone balance now the top thing i always recommend to people look after your liver getting cruciferous vegetables which are things like broccoli cauliflower kale broccoli sprouts um brussels sprouts fantastic sources and they are really good to help your liver detox um, and basically your liver is also the organ which helps to control our hormonal balance and it also actually helps to eliminate um, and detoxify our hormones as well but the other key thing which i talk about i feel like so much but i just cannot stress how much this makes such a drastic difference to your general health and well-being is look after your blood sugar levels they massively play a role with hormonal balance so i have a whole video on it i will leave it listed down below as well as a whole video actually on supporting your liver so i'll leave that listed down below as well now i completely appreciate sometimes balancing your hormones is not as straightforward as that and you know sometimes it does take a little bit more extra work um and if you feel like you're not really too sure what's out of balance and you're kind of feeling like you're shooting an arrow in the dark then i definitely recommend going to speak to someone and seeing if you can have your hormones looked into I do offer one-to-one -one consultations. So if you want to work with me personally, um, then we can definitely work on that together and find, you know, what's your specific imbalance and help you correct that and to live a kind of symptom-free life. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, I will leave my consultation details in the description box um, and the, all the details are also on my website, which is www.ebonyjanehensler.com. Also, just to throw in at the end, a couple of other things that can help with headaches and menstrual headaches in particular are things like getting off your technology so technology can actually really worsen the headache sometimes in fact actually some people find their headaches um, are much better just being in a dark room in a dark space so that could be maybe lying down as well putting something over your eyes just to help um, relieve that headache um, but technology is a big trigger so be wary of that one also you can use cool cloth so you get a flannel and um, put it in some cold water and lie that on the head that can be nice and relieving as well for the headache i personally also find stretching really helps as well so just um doing kind of neck rolls it's usually obviously in this neck area just kind of rolling the head down stretching out this part here and rolling up that can really help and as well from the side as well so if you hold um, your one shoulder down hold one hand on one side and then pull very very gently do not pull hard um, and then you want to do it on the other side and that hold it for a couple of seconds and then when you release your head should feel a lot lighter that can really help but yeah i think they are pretty much all of my key key tips that i find are really effective and also for my clients as well so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you aren't already make sure you click that subscribe button and come join the team so you don't miss any videos from me i post videos every wednesday and sunday so two videos a week but anyway thank you guys so so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video Mwah. bye